spokesman. Y'all know my next guest tonight from Enchanted, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Westworld. He now stars in Jury Duty. Anyone here have any reason why they don't feel like they would be a good juror for this case? Uh, yes. Um, I feel like there's a chance that I might be an unwelcome uh, distraction. Why is that, sir? I'm a recognizable public figure. Respectfully, I don't recognize you. I'm sorry, who are you? That's, uh, that's okay, a lot of people do. My most recent movie is this movie, Sonic the Hedgehog, and we were just, this gentleman and I were just chatting about it earlier and yesterday, and he's a big fan, and, and we... You were talking to this gentleman? Did you stand up? Do you know who this fella is? I do, yeah. It took me a little bit to notice him yesterday, but I recognize him, yes. Please welcome back to The Late Show, James Marsden. <laughs> Put in their drinks. Nothing. Just told them you were coming out. Um, <laughs> Thank uh, you very listen, much. Listen, very I'm a, kind We're going to talk about the, the show uh, Jury Duty, but first I just want to tell you how grateful I am to you that the show exists, because I was in a bad mood this weekend. Yeah, I ain't worried about the WGA strike possibly happening. Sure. And I said to Evie, let's just watch something really funny. Here, Jury Duty's good. We watched all eight, eight episodes in one sitting. Wow. It's hilarious. Wow. Well, thank it's, you. It's, I, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> it's one of the best things I've ever seen you do. That's... And okay. it's, such a, it's a, such a strange concept. Tell the people what it is. Okay, so... <laughs> the show is essentially... If anyone's familiar with The Truman Show, it's, it's basically The Truman Show meets The Office, which is... It's completely... <laughs> right, you're already going, what the hell is that? <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's, Meets it's like me and playing order. myself, a, a sort of heightened, um, sensationalized, entitled Hollywood jerk version of myself, and a bunch of improvisational actors who are brilliant, and one guy that thinks the whole thing is real, and so we have spent three weeks on jury duty, and it's all manufactured and fake. And, and he's the only one who doesn't know that everyone else is an actor. The only one. The only one. Hidden cameras. He thinks he's being followed around by a camera crew for a boring documentary about jury duty that's going to end up on public access or something, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Meanwhile, we're following every move, and so there were seven or eight scripts that had beats, like comedic beats. Gene, Gene, uh, Lee Eisenberg and Gene Stubnitsky, who created The Office, and we had some brilliant writers write these scripts, but there was no scripted dialogue, so it was mostly improvisation. How did you know how far you could push it without tipping your hand. Right. I mean, first of all, you play James Marsden. It's not like you're playing right. somebody else. You're recognizable. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. playing James Marsden, uh -huh. Hollywood actor who doesn't want to be on right. jury duty, so he's acting right. super entitled. And I, and I, so I'm glad to hear that you say that that's not what you're like. Well, I thought... Because it's a really wonderfully, I... hilariously awful version. That's of great. What it's you nice might to see my like. true self come out finally. Yes. Thirty years of fake. <laughs> Yeah. 30 years of faking the good yes. guy thing. It's nice to, to you, just let it Or you could just fly. pretend that wasn't you and just let the real you come well, out. No, it this. was exciting to me to kind of send up Hollywood a little bit, right? To sort of uh, lampoon, you know, what I do for... I, I, look, I take what I do for a living very seriously, but, you know, sometimes it's like, this is absurd. What, right? So well, to make fun of the guys who think that they're only, the only conversation that should be had is about their IMDb page is right. kind, of, kind of a fun thing to do. And to be, com and to be completely given permission to just say the most horrible things you can think of <laughs> and be the worst and, person and in the room. And do some horrible things, too. And do some... I'm not going to get into details. Some unsavory some things. Some completely unsavory sure. things. So, but how did you... I'd like to back to how, how did you know how far to go to push it? You and, and the other members uh, of the cast, did you guys discuss what the limits were? Because they're right. like, how does he not know something's going on when sure. at one point you help a young couple make love to each other by jumping on their bed? I do. <laughs> I do. I help them soak, as they call it. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, so, great question. So, Thanks. the idea... You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the idea was, here were these scripted beats that we had to find moments for. At the beginning, you know, we were worried that he would get suspicious, so we had to push... We had to make deposits into the reality bank, we called it, which is like, let's do three or four hours of just boring court. And we had... Very lucky, we had Ike Barinholtz's father 
Who plays the judge. Who plays the judge. Who wanted to be an actor when he was young, but then he said that that's not realistic, and he got, he was a defense attorney for the, his whole career. So he knew the legalese and the speak in the court. So we had the ability with these brilliant lawyers to just go in and, you know, set the stage to be like, well, this can't be a show, because that's the most boring five hours I've ever spent in my life. Right. So anytime he would get suspicious, Jake Szymanski, the director, would say, okay, guys, we had to pull it back a little bit. And we would find little moments to push the comedy beats that were written in the script. So it was like, you know, knowing that we would at sometimes have a lot of, we would be subjected to really boring court days. That Did all would like be cut out. Did you have or anything? Was anybody talking to you? No, there were a few people that had earpieces in. I was too scared that he was going to see it. And sure. also, I didn't, I just wanted to have the long leash and wanted to be in control of the own ship. Like, I, I just, I wanted to kind of fly without a net mm -hmm. and, um, and be horrible James Marsden. What I love, what I love is, <laughs> without giving anything away, I love the fact that you're actually not a juror, you're an alternate. Right, so right, right. It's like, what can we do to you make have, this guy you have to, to go crush through his everything, ego even more? You more. don't even get to vote. Right, and... The, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, and I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, he doesn't take that too, uh, too well throughout the process. But, uh, but also, the, the, the gentleman, I think the reason why the show is, first of all, I've never been a part of something that has gone so, like, meteoric so quickly. This show is like, it came out on a Friday, and Saturday, everyone was saying, jury duty, you're in the jury, the jury thing. Um, but I think it's all because uh, this guy, Ronald Gladden, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet or not. He is like one of the most pure-hearted, <laughs> kind, decent human beings. That is, and, and the, I don't think it would have been as good without him at the center of it. I because agree. Because he keeps making the right ethical choices. Right, and not that we were presenting him with a sort of, you know, like moral obstacle course, but from the beginning, I was like, I don't want to do a prank show to somebody. For three weeks is a long time to mess with somebody's human experience. But it, it's not. It's not. It's this very interesting exploration. Right. It gives you faith in mankind that this right. fella they were saying is the, being so kind to all of you who are so yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any problem with what I do. <laughs> um, no, 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 but that's it. They said, we want to create a hero's journey for this man, and we're going to surround him with a bunch of bizarre, eccentric weirdos and sort of absurd situations and see how he reacts. And hopefully by the end of it, he'll, he'll have his 12 Angry Men moment and sort of unite all of us and inspire us. And then we'll go, hey, that was all fake. And then hopefully he doesn't have a mental breakdown. Yeah. We have to take a quick break, but don't go nowhere. We'll be right back with James Marsden, everybody.